number 68, using the disassociation constant, KD, which is equal to 7.8 times 10 to the negative 18th, calculate the equilibrium concentrations of the cadmium ion, CD2+, and the cyanide item, item ion, CN-, minus, in a 0 0.250 molar solution of CDCN4-2-. minus. Okay, so we're dealing with disassociation constants, KDs. KDs are used with complex ions. Now, complex ions means that generally you're going to have a metal come in with a polyatomic and together they will form one whole ion. Remember, an ion just has to have a charge at the end. So here is our complex ion, right? CD, there's the metal. The polyatomic was CN. And overall, they have an overall negative two charge, so it's still an ion. Now, if we're using the disassociation constant, Kd, that means that these complex ions will break down. So the complex ion will dissociate, break down tomato, tomato. So we have to write the balanced equation. And thankfully, they told us what the ions they were going to break down into. So let's go for it. Cd. CN4, 2 minus, now it has a charge, so I know that that's aqueous. This will come to equilibrium, because we're still dealing with K values, so that's always equilibrium. And the two ions that it forms is the cation, the positive, CD2+, plus, and CN minus. They're both ions, so I know that they're also aqueous, so everything's here is aqueous. Everything is going to be in the K expression. And now we just have to balance. I see that I have four cyanides here, so I need to put a four in front of the CN here. Okay, and now we're done for that part. I'm going to put this over here. Actually, I'm going to move this a little bit because you'll see what we have to do next. Now, we want to find out the, cap the, you know, the equilibrium concentrations. Okay. And they starting us off with a 0 0.250 molar solution of the actual, you know, complex ion. If they're starting us off with that, this has to run through equilibrium. So this initial value, this starting value is the initial value. And as soon as you have an initial value, we're going to be doing, you guessed it, the lovely ice table. So I'm just going to ice it out, ICE. We've done these over and over and over. I think throughout the past, this is the third chapter. We're running through ice tables. So nothing new here. I stands for initial. Initially, I have a 0 0.250 molar solution. And maybe, maybe I'll just bring this back to the center just because we're doing the math here. And then I'll pull over the... Uh, I'll pull it over to the other side when we're doing the actual math. So 0.25 uh, molarity of the complex ion. And they didn't tell me that I had any initial for the cadmium or the cyanide. So zero and zero. C stands for change. So the change in concentration, which I don't know. This is where your variables are. And if you're starting with nothing, you can only go up from there. So these are going to be the pluses. And these are going to be the minuses minus by x, right? And use your coefficients. Since there was only one cadmium, this would just be minus x. Since there was only one, sorry, since there was only one complex ion, minus x. Since there's one cadmium, you'll say plus x. But now since I have four cyanides, this would be plus four x. Th that coefficient has to come down with your change, because it's all a mole ratio. Equilibrium is just bringing the two together, just cleaning up everything. So 0 0.250 minus x is 0 0.250 minus x. 0 plus x is just x, and 0 plus 4x is just 4x. These are your values that you are going to be using in your k expression. And since we're disassociating it, we are you going to use the KD value that they gave us. So let's write out the general formula for the KD, right? Just like any K value, it's always going to be products divided by the reactants. In this case, you have the two products. They're both aqueous, so they both get included. 
So I'm just going to double bracket here. And then we have one complex ion on the bottom. So I'm just going to put the whole thing on the bottom. So we have CD four, uh, two plus times the CN minus. But now remember, since there's four of them, I have to raise that to the fourth. And then I have the one complex ion. So CD CN four two minus. Now we're all ready to go. Let's plug in our equilibrium values, right? So if I if I should, I'll do okay. KD, and maybe I'll bring this down a little bit just to show you what we're plugging in here. KD was 7.8 times 10 to the negative 18th. Cadmium was just the X. The cyanide was the 4X. And this is 0 0.250 minus X. Okay, now here comes your assumption. Remember, when we see that we have numbers and then we have minus X, if we keep this minus X in there with the math, it's gonna get really, really, really crazy real fast. We're gonna have to do probably the quadratic equation. So we try to assume at first. So we say to ourselves, okay, since this KD value is so low, it's times 10 to the negative 18th. That means that at equilibrium, you should have mostly reactants. But if I started off with all reactants and I'm ending with mostly reactants, this drop is probably so small that you probably don't even see it. And that's why we can say that probably at the end of the day, we're going to be pretty close to just 0.25. So I can get rid of this minus X. We do the 5% rule at the end just to see if we can keep the assumption. Um, and then we go on our merry way. So let's do the math. Let's assume, and then let's just check our answer. So 7.8 times 10 to the negative 18th equals, let's see, we have double bracket up here. We got a single bracket down here. We have X, 4X to the fourth divided by 0 0.250. Okay, let's tackle this 4X to the fourth. Keep in mind that 4x to the fourth just means that you have four of the thing that's in parentheses multiplied by each other. So in this case, we have 4x times 4x times 4x times 4x. So multiply all the fours first. Four times four is 16, 64, and then 256. So 256. And now you collected one, two, three, four X's. So that's just X to the fourth. So I can erase this whole jazz. Maybe pull this out a little bit. And now my number in there is 256 X to the fourth. Now, probably what I'll do is I will, I guess, cross multiply. You could divide the top and the bottom as well to get the, you know, the right side. I, a uh, one number, but I'll just cross multiply at this at this point. So 7.8 times 10 to the negative 18 times 0.25. I get 1.95 times 10 to the negative 18th. And this equals 256. I'm picking up another X. So that's now X to the fifth. Let's get X by itself, divide by 256. Okay, that crosses this number off. We now are just left with X to the fifth, and that number divided by 256. Try to keep as many, you know, sig figs as you can on the paper. 7.617. Times 10 to the negative 21st. And now, in essence, if we want to get rid of this fifth, you know, square, uh, you know, I guess fifth thing, right? We would have to do the fifth root on both sides. I have no idea how to do that in my calculator, but I do know that I could just do the reverse. I can just raise this to the inverse number, 5 over 1. If I just raise it to one over five, these would cancel. 
And whatever you do on that side, you got to do on this side. So I'll just raise this to the one over five. And then I'll just get X equals. So let's see, I'm just going to take my 7.6172. I'm sent to the negative 21st, raise that to the one fifth. And I get 9.47 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, let's just perform the 5% rule because we did assume. And remember, and maybe just pull this up a little bit. Whoop, what happened to that part? Oh boy, what happened to, okay, there we go. So we're just making this at a percentage. We're going to take that number and divide by the initial. And since we want to find out a percent, we times it by 100. If this is 5% or less, we assumed correctly, and we can keep that x value. I'm going to say 9.47 times 10 to the negative fifth divided by 0.25 times 100. And yeah, I don't even get 1%. So we're way good. So I'm just going to keep that there. And this is molarity. Now, we just have to make sure that we're answering the question. We wanted to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of both the CD2 plus and the CN minus. So if I may, I'll drop this down. And we're going straight to the equilibrium line for those two um, ions. We did say that the CD2 plus ion, that was just X. And we found out what X was. So the cadmium ion concentration is 9.47 times 10 to the negative fifth molarity. So that one's done. Beautiful. And now we just have to find out the CN minus. At equilibrium, the CN minus was four times that. So I literally just have to plug in the X value for four, right? And maybe I will just bring this over a little bit over here and just say that, okay, here goes the X value in here, 9.47 times 10 to the negative fifth. Multiply that by five, and then, I uh, multiply that by four, and then we're good. 9.47 times 10 to the negative fifth times four. And we get three point, I guess, seven, nine. If we rounded to every, you know, to all three sig figs. And those are your two answers. Whoop, whoop. There we go. Okay. What do you think? I really hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Thank you so much. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. It's absolutely incredible that we're, you know, we're at this number, at, you know, to be honest. So let's just keep growing. Thank you so much. And I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.